This is Gary Shoup with part three of how to design a continuous flow intersection. I hope you enjoy it. Step six, we were talking about how to review right turns at the center CFI traffic signal and how they are to operate. Um, I'm showing two different diagrams here of actual CFI plans uh, that were either constructed or scheduled to be constructed in the uh, United States. Um, the one on the left, I'm showing uh, the right turn not signalized at the at the center CFI traffic signal. Uh, it, it's it's based on a, a yield movement. Uh, I, I have some concerns with that. Uh, I have not talked to anyone or, or seen it in operation, the one on the left. Uh, but my concern is that uh, the northbound right turn movement, I'm going to call it here, sh uh, shown with a, a right turn purple uh, arrow, uh, is going to be seeing a green ball uh, at the same time that uh, the southbound left turn movement with the advanced CFI traffic signal is, is going to be seeing a green arrow. And uh, my, my concern is that uh, the motors is going to be so uh, accustomed to making a right turn on green ball and not worrying about conflicting traffic that uh, they're going to make this movement and um, they, there's just going to be some confusion with the motorists. One thinking that they have the right turn movement, thinking it has the right away because there's the green ball, and, and the left turn movement, thinking that it has the movement because they have the green arrow. Um, I don't know how it's actually operating in the field. If anyone does, please let me know. Um, I think there's some conflicting with signal displays there. Um, the one on the right here, I'm showing a, a case where the it was signalized by the designer. And uh, here, uh, that right turn movement is going to see a signal display, even though it, it, the signal display is going to be right on top of the stop bar almost, that uh, they, they can't go at the same time as the advance. Uh, left turn movements f f uh, from the advanced CFI traffic signal here being the, the southbound left turn arrows. Um, but if they can't see the signal heads, w which are placed uh, really close to the stop line, uh, one would say maybe in violation of the MUTCD, they're going to see a green ball. And are, are they going to think that they should go ahead? Um, if that is occurring, that's, that's a pretty easy situation to fix after it starts. Uh, y you can put up a right turn red arrows uh, on the mass arm support on the far side. Um, step seven, uh, just, just lay out the conceptual CFI based on the advanced calculations that you computed previously. Um, the conceptual diagram, see how it's laid out. And uh, what I'd go into next is uh, with step eight, actually model it in, in, the, in the simulation software. Either use VISM, uh, sim traffic works also. Uh, what I'm showing here is actually a sim traffic uh, example of a CFI operation. Uh, if you're looking at the streets, it's saying Austin Pike and Sarah 741. It's actually not a representation of those uh, streets, the one that's actually going to be constructed. It's a, it's a case where I've modified the model um, with different lanes and so forth uh, to show a more typical CFI operation than what's going to be constructed out there. But uh, before going into step eight, I, I went through steps one through seven to make sure that uh, what I'm putting in the miles is going to work. And it's a great starting point. Really, if you went through steps one through seven and you put it in the mile, it, it should work fine. Uh, here I'm just showing the date steps again as a summary for people who may want to look at it. Um, I'm hoping to have an online CFI calculator pretty soon uh, at my website, www.garyshoop.com. Um, this video may be up before I actually have that website up and going. There, there's a few websites I'm working on right now, and uh, I hope to have that website up in, in near near future. If anything, I, I may I may just throw up the calculator and, and work on fixing up that website uh, within the next month or two. Um, back to an animation I showed earlier. Um, I was trying to show like how the left turn movements are being separated out from the CFI. In this case, being uh, Phase three and seven, uh, the left turn movements on the eastbound and westbound approaches here. So uh, I'm taking out the left turn movements uh, from the main intersection, and uh, I'm sure I'm going to combine with phases four and eight here uh, in order to reduce the one phase from the cycle length. I'm going to show the same thing now, but I'm going to go through a step by step process, uh, expanding on the animation I showed before. So. Uh, the barrier and ring design I'm showing right now um, is based on the previous slide where the left turn movements were uh, separated out and combined with phases four and eight. Okay, in the lower right hand corner here, um, I'm showing uh, the center CFI at, as labeled and, and the west advanced CFI traffic signal and the east advanced CFI traffic signal. And I'm going to try to show you how uh, 
I came across came about uh, a phasing process for I would say uh, a typical CFI type of design. Um, here I, I'm just moving phases one, two, five, and six, the arrows, uh, and better to show it from an animation standpoint. Um, now at the center CFI traffic's in the lower right hand corner, you can see how I've added the movements that I'm showing and the ring and barrier phases. And now I'm adding the right turns at the center CFI traffic signal to operate concurrently uh, with the protected left turns that are not on the CFI approaches at the center um, CFI signal. Now I'm going about adding um, the phases at the advanced uh, CFI traffic signals. Um, I'm showing where I want to operate the phase for the movement away from the center CFI a and I'm showing here the advanced left turn I'm, I'm showing it with a little red highlight around it because uh, like where am I going to put this phase it, it's going to be in, it, it's, it, it, how am I going to operate it and, and, and not disrupt traffic I, I don't want to disrupt that westbound advanced movement going away from it and, and now I'm going to look at the same for the eastbound uh, uh, the east side advanced CFI and, and again I, I'm a little perplexed you know where do you where do you want to put this uh, advanced left turn movement in the ring and barrier structure well what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add another barrier and uh, I'm going to drop I'm going to drop it in here and I think you guys will understand how I'm doing this once I show it from an animation standpoint I'm also going to add another ring um, to make everything work smoothly um, you see a slight change in, in the slides, such as because I couldn't get it exactly the same going from one to the next. Um, but here, um, I'm adding phases 9, 10, and 11. Uh, and I explained to you I added another barrier. Now with phase 11, I'm going to add the non CFI uh, through movements, this being the northbound southbound movement. And I'm going to add those advanced CFI phases that I discussed earlier. And what this is going to do is this is going to allow the through movements on the non-CFI approaches to operate the same time as uh, the advanced left turn movements. And I'm going to be getting the timing for phase 11 based on what we looked at earlier, um, based on the travel time to go from one spot to the next and how we we're calculating the advanced distance. And on phase 9 also, I have the advanced left turn movement there also still working but this time I'm having the movements approach it away from the center CFI so if you look at phases four and eight um, I'm going to start the eastbound and westbound through movements on the CFI approaches but still run the left turn advance movements because uh, those through movements will not have reached the advanced CFI traffic signals yet so uh, phase nine is going to be a known time also and then with phase 10, uh, I'm just starting the through movements away from it. Um, so what I'm showing here right now is uh, CFI phasing that would work at a, a majority of the traffic signals um, that have CFIs currently. Um, and I'm separating it out to phase 1 and phase 5, the advanced left turns you can actuate easily. Um, you can actually actuate other movements here also, especially during the non-peak hours, which I'm not going into detail here. Um, I think this is very important because some of the designers who have been working on CFI traffic signals, they've just been running everything fixed time, and uh, I, I don't think there's a need to. Uh, I, I think you can operate it actuated. Maybe you don't want to actuate phases 9 and 11 based on the travel time between them, but I, I don't see any reason not to actuate phases 1 and 5, um, phases 4 and 8, especially the non-peak hours. Uh, this is the end of part 3. Um, see part 4 elsewhere on YouTube.com. Thank you.